Hello everyone, Lawrence here with a slightly different style video than what I usually do because I actually lost the full review video that I was doing on this and this board has to get shipped out today. So I'm rushing this, but I already did complete full testing on it, so it should really be okay. Anyway, this is the ASUS Prime B350 Plus. So it's an AM4 B350 chipset motherboard with Ryzen support and also Crossfire, which is a bit strange. Um, it has five times protection, so safe slot. I should really look up what that is, but I have this sneaking suspicion that it's going to be some really weird marketing term, so it probably doesn't matter. Langard, really nice to have. Over voltage protection, also great. Power supply Digi plus VRM, so that should help. And a stainless steel backplate, which I don't really know how it protects your system, but hey, I guess it's better than a plastic one. Anyway. There's a bunch of marketing material on here as well. We're going to look at the box itself later, but they just say extreme stability, superb performance. So basically USB 3.1 is twice as fast as USB 3.0. Who would have thunk? Uh, and then something about eSports and stuff people don't really care about. In this box, there is the motherboard itself, two SATA cables and the instruction manual. That's all that's in there. So the board itself then is what we are going to be looking at right now. So I'm going to leave the motherboard in this orientation for now. Um, I want to talk about the B350 chipset because a lot of people say, okay, I need to go Ryzen. I need to buy the most expensive chipset. So the X370 at the moment, uh, you really don't. So B350 actually has a single PCIe 3.0 16X slot, which basically is all you need. You don't need to run dual graphics because dual graphics sucks. We all know that, but you still get the exact same amount of USB 2 ports uh, and then you get two USB 3.1 Gen 1 ports compared to the 6 on X370. And you also have uh, two USB 3.1 ports, which is the same as with X370. So you basically just lose four USB 3.0 ports. Uh, when it comes to SATA, um, it's a very similar story. Now, normally X370 has four SATA ports. We have four here and then we have another two here. So these are the original two that come with the B350 chipset and then ASUS split up the SATA Express connectors to four more SATA ports because SATA Express, I don't think you can even buy SSDs that use SATA Express. So great thing that ASUS did here compared to like my Gigabyte Aorus motherboard, which actually has that U.2 and that SATA Express connector that no one uses. I'd much rather just have normal SATA connectors. Would be nice to see them all stacked on one side though. So these SATA connectors also support RAID 0, RAID 1 and RAID 10 uh, on a hardware level, exactly the same as with X370. And there is multi GPU support on this board, which you don't get with all the B350 motherboards. Only Crossfire, there is no real reason why it shouldn't come with SLI support as well but NVIDIA just asks a little bit of money to certify that. So the one on top, that is our PCIe 16X slot. Uh, as you can see, there are only six slots here. So the top one is missing, so it should be fine with clearance. So you don't have to worry about your top slot hitting your CPU cooler if you're running something massive like a D15, for example. So this one's 16X, this one is 8X. These two, those are 1X, and then these are just the old style um, PCI, not PCIe lanes. Uh, I would really like to see these just get replaced with more of these because who the hell uses this stuff anyway? Um, moving on then, where the original top PCIe lane would be, that's where you have an M.2 4X slot with full length support, so you can run any NVMe SSD in here. Great. The amount of connectors on this motherboard is a little bit low, especially when it comes to front panel IO. So you do get your HD audio and SPDIF and your COM port, but only two USB 2 ports and one USB 3 port, along with your front panel IO. Would really like to see a quick connector included because those quick connector thingies are super handy when you're building a system. Chipset only supports so much, but still would be nice to see more uh, USB 2 headers on here, especially for people who are going to use um, those RGB liquid coolers, for example, that also run off of a USB 2 header. Would be nice to see a few more on here. On the left side of the board, you get your audio. So it's a separate PCB part. Um, audio quality is nothing special. It's not bad, but it's not mind blowing either. So it's there. There's a little bit of a trace line going on with some red lights. So the top of the board then, pretty interesting stuff going on around here. 
It's very basic looking, but as I'll tell later, it's basically got everything. So we got our four dim slots, DDR4 support. I don't have an Agisa 0.6 um, BIOS yet, so I can't really test full speed memory on here yet, uh, but it went up to 2800 megahertz fine. We have our 24 pin power in here and our eight pin is all the way over here. I prefer horizontally mounted um, eight pin power because the cable bends easier, but that's just nitpicking at this point. Um, what I found really weird was, look at this. This thing actually moves. Not super happy about that. This one's pretty solid, but this just moves, so makes me doubt the actual cooling that it's doing. But cooling is not a problem at all. Um, basically, I tested this with the 1600 that's in here right now, but also with a 1700 and a 1400. And these Ryzen chips are completely limited by the chip himself, not by the chipset in the motherboard when it comes to overclocking. So this chip went to four gigahertz, on both this motherboard and on my AX370 Gaming 5 motherboard from Aorus. When you're overclocking, cooling is going to be pretty important. So it's nice to see that there's nothing tall sticking out here in case you're using air coolers. So great clearance over here. We have a fan header over here, two more fan headers over here. And then we have an RGB header because obviously RGB is love and RGB is light. So we need a lot of RGB headers. Final thing we'll look at is the IO then. So Great to see we do still have PS2, which is great in case your motherboard um, is acting weirdly and you're trying to access the BIOS or trying to install an old operating system. Great to have a PS2 port. Um, dual USB 2 on here, we have VGA, DVI and HDMI 2.0. Uh, and then over here we have those dual USB 3.0 and then this are the uh, 3.1 10 gigabit um, connections. Over here, gigabit ethernet. It's not Intel ethernet, it's just crappy internet but it works and then again dual 3.0s and your very basic audio outputs. Moving on to the BIOS then, I really like what ASUS has done with the BIOS. It's very intuitive to use. You can easily see information about your CPU, your memory. You can set up memory profiles really quickly. You can see your CPU and chassis fan speeds, even set up custom curves, which is always a nice thing to do to make sure your system is always as quiet or as cool as it possibly should be. What you can also do is change the boot priority. You can easily see all your devices and also change the easy system tuning to maximum performance or maximum energy efficiency. The more advanced BIOS also really good. There is an insane amount of customizability here. Basically everything you can change way more than even on my way more expensive gigabyte motherboard. So ASUS's BIOS is definitely better in that regard. Um, the updates are a bit slow. As I said, there is no Agisa 1.0.0.6 version yet, but when it comes, it should be really nice because, I mean, there's so much to play and tinker with. You should really be able to overclock very, very well on this motherboard. Now, there are an awful lot of settings and you can easily read your smart status on like your hard drives and SSDs or monitor or change boot settings. There are also a few, to a few tools and it's really nice that you can even set these animations when you switch between tabs in the BIOS, but I found it super distracting, so I turned it off right away. Anyway, guys, if you like this video, hit that like button. If you want to see more, hit the subscribe button. Uh, Basically, if you want to see more content from Unicorn Reviews, there is Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And if you want to really support the channel, there's a Patreon link for that. For now, though, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.